How you guys doing? Humblezies here and welcome back to some more Battleborn where today we're going to take a look at microtransactions and their place in this game, what effect they're going to have on us the players, and what effect they could have on the game in the long run. So starting off, yes, there will be microtransactions in this game. And I know a lot of people are not going to like that because, you know, you paid 60 bucks for this game, you don't want to see microtransactions in it, or at least you don't want to see microtransactions that are going to harm the game itself. And that's not the case with this game. Confirmed by Gearbox, the only things you should be able to buy with actual money is character skins, which I think is fine. If you're going to buy something cosmetic that will not affect the actual gameplay, that will not actually affect your damage or even how fast you run or if you collect more money than somebody else, there's none of that. There will simply be you want a skin buy it, go flaunt it, that's the extent of what you're going to get. And I think that's completely fair, and if you want to get them, get them. If you don't want them, don't get them. That's simply how it is. Now, DLC is also confirmed for the game, which we all knew because we know Gearbox likes their DLC. Borderlands 2 is a great example of a game that had a ton of DLC that we all enjoyed pretty much. Overall, some were better than others, but we had a good time with them, and they were worth our money. Um, there is going to be DLC for this game. There's going to be, I believe, five DLC packs for the game in its entirety, each one costing $5, which is really good. And in those DLC packs, you're going to get new taunts, new skins, possibly new characters, new maps, new story missions. And for five bucks, that's pretty good. For $5, you know, I've, I've paid more money and gotten less than that in the game. So if that is the case for five dollars, it's not a bad. The season pass in its entirety is 20 bucks, which is really good. So I'm happy with that. And overall, I'd say that, again, if you want the DLC, get them. If you don't want them, don't get them. For five bucks, I think they're going to be okay. And for what they have to offer, I, I think they're worth buying. And, you know, if you love the game enough, if you like it and want to keep supporting it, then you'll get them. If you don't want it, you don't like the game, you move on, then simply put, you moved on. You don't have to buy them. Similar to Call of Duty DLC. You don't want it, don't get it. Fair enough. Now, people are concerned with the idea of possibly um, allowing others to buy uh, in-game currency with actual money or buying the loot packs with actual money. Now, initially when I heard this, I was like, they wouldn't do this. And then I thought about it and I'm like, maybe they will do it. But I'm not worried or concerned about this upsetting the balance of the game, even though this might be a more uh, direct way of possibly getting an advantage over your opponents compared to just buying a skin. So the thing you have to consider with possibly buying in-game currency or buying a loot pack is what are the benefits of skipping on the grind? Now, some people are like, oh, I don't like grind, but grind is a big part of this game in terms of unlocking characters, unlocking the lore, uh, unlocking the new skills for these characters. You're going to do a lot of grinding. With so many characters, there's a lot to do. Now, if you just buy the in-game currency or buy the loot packs without actually having to play through the missions or the PvP, you then miss out on unlocking new skins for the characters. You miss out on unlocking the new um, skills that they have, because each character has hidden skills uh, called mutations that you can get as you play and as you unlock more, and you miss out on these skills if you don't level up the character, and a good way to not level up a character is to not actually play that character at all. So you miss out on that if you go out and buy the currency or buy loot packs. You miss out on all that stuff. You miss out on the lore behind these characters. You miss out on mastering these characters, unlocking some you know special fanfare achievement. So is there really a point in skipping out and buying this currency? For some people, yes. Some people who don't have time to sit down and play through all these characters. There is beauty to be held in just being able to go out and buy that kind of stuff. However, as someone who actually wants to play the game and unlock all the stuff and get any kind of advantage I can have over my opponents, there's no point in it. And to be honest, if you go up against somebody who spent all their money on loot packs or in-game currency compared to somebody who spent all their time playing and unlocking the skills, the person who's been playing, unlocking the skills, getting better at the game is going to have the obvious advantage in every confrontation. So I'm not really worried. The loot packs are a whole different story. The loot packs, some people are worried, these things give you buffs like more attack damage, more attack speed, movement speed, cooldown time. These will break the game if people can just buy all the best gear. And I tell you, do not worry because you haven't played the game yet if you're saying this. In order to actually use your items in game, you have to collect crystals. You get crystals by defeating enemies or finding these like big crystal dumps where you can just beat on them and they spew out crystals and then they explode. Now, some items cost very little, like let's say 500 crystals. Very easy to get. You'll get probably within your first, I'd say five minutes, you'll probably unlock your first item. Now, let's say someone goes out, they buy the highest level uh, loot pack they can get. They get a whole bunch of epic loot and they equip it. One piece of like high tier loot can take up to 1800 crystals to get. 
Now, if you're taking up to 1800 crystals, you're not going to get that until probably, I'd say, a quarter of your way through the game. Now, let's say you have a whole slew, say you're, all your items, all three of your items, your loot, your gears, are high-level gear. That means you're not going to get all of them in a match, most likely. Or if you do, you're not going to get all of them until very late game, compared to somebody who's running maybe like one blue, one white, and maybe one uh, gold level gear. They're going to get their items probably by the time, you know, the game's about halfway, they're probably going to have all their stuff. Meaning that they have an advantage over you because you wanted to, you know, splurge and get all the high level gear. Yeah, you're going to get the most bonuses with that gear, but it doesn't mean anything if you don't actually get to use that gear, if you understand what I'm saying. So, even if they did allow you to buy them, it's really not anything to worry about. They won't have that big an effect on the gameplay. And even if they do, it won't matter by the time somebody unlocks them. So people who are worried about that in terms of microtransactions, do not be worried. They probably won't do it. Even if they did do it, it won't have any real impact on the game. Rather, they're probably going to keep it down to skins and DLC. And I'm sure they'll do fine with just that. But if they do add you know buying in-game currency in the game or buying loot packs in the game do not stress it don't worry about it it won't matter that much at least in my mind if that's how it works if they don't change anything too much then you will not need to worry about it so hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys understand what i'm saying hope you guys aren't too worried about microtransactions in the game remember they're completely optional you do not have to buy them if you don't want them and I hope to see you guys in another video very soon zeus out